This is a swimming pool clock, and whether you've used one or not, you've probably noticed a clock like this on the wall of your local swimming pool that isn't there to tell the time. This is actually a pace clock, and it's designed to help coaches and swimmers structure and measure their efforts that much easier. Now, if you haven't used this piece of equipment before, it can seem a little bit confusing. Well, we're here to help, and we're going to explain why you might want to use a clock and how you can incorporate it into your next swim session. You might well have noticed fast squad swimmers using a clock and presumed that it's only for the elite. Well, that isn't true. It's actually perfect for swimmers of all abilities. Say, if you're doing sets or reps, it's a great way to track and clock your times and also see your progress as you go through the session. And if there's several of you in the lane, then it's a great way to have a template or a structure to make sure that your group work together and it makes the life of the coach that much easier too. You've generally got two types of swimming pace clocks, the analog version that you've seen here or the digital version. Now when it comes to the analog version it should look pretty familiar as it is the shape of a clock and instead of actually having 12 on the top you've got zero, instead of having six on the bottom you've obviously got 30 so the hours are replaced by seconds. Now you can either have the four pronged option that we've shown you or a two pronged option and usually you'll find that each of the prongs will be a different colour so it helps you to differentiate with being able to keep track. Now the digital version is quite often doubled up as actually a clock that tells the time but you really just need to concentrate on the seconds and sometimes the minutes as well. A pace clock can bring structure to a squad, making it easier for the coach to keep control of a large group of swimmers, especially if there's different abilities, as different lanes can be going off different turnaround times. But more on that in a moment. First, we need to address the standard lingo. Let's begin with the leaving time. And it makes sense to go on the zero, which in this case, the coach would refer to as leaving on the top. It might be the quarter pass, so coach would probably say leaving on the 15, so when the hand reaches a 15 seconds pass. Another thing to note is the color, because if you've got four hands, for example, you need to know which one it is. So in that case, they might refer to on the top or the red top, for example. That leads us on to the leaving gap, and it's quite self-explanatory. It's the time that you leave between each swimmer. So if, say, the coach says going on the top, you obviously can't all push off at once. You need to leave a uniform gap between each swimmer, and the coach should dictate whether that's going to be a five-second or a 10-second gap. If you're in a 25-metre pool and there's four or more of you, you probably want to leave just five seconds, as with a 10-second gap, the lead swimmer is likely to be back and pushing off the wall before the first swimmer has even gone. Unless you're doing 50-metre reps, then it's a good idea to stick to the five. And obviously the length of the pool can determine whether you want to go five or 10 second gaps. On the whole, if you're in a 50 meter pool, then it's nice to leave a 10 second gap so you don't catch or get in the way of each other. It can be a little tricky to start with, but once you've got the hang of using a clock, it can really change your sessions, especially if you're swimming in a group. But one bugbear of mine that I really just have to point out is if you're going at intervals, say five or 10 second intervals, make sure you actually stick to those and you don't go early or late as you'll start to really annoy the other swimmers in your lane. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up, like if you have, and hit the globe to subscribe. If you want to see a video with some swim tips from Josh and Berger, well, that's just down here. And if you want to see a detailed video on how to swim front crawl, you can find that one over here.